Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is telling that the members for Sufre, <coughs> Pastor Jack, in presenting the bill to this House, emphasized that the purpose of the bill was regulatory oversight. Two words, regulatory oversight. So the objective is to regulate, it is to control, it is to direct, it is to impose, it is to place an additional burden on those individuals conducting business in this country or seeking to register business entities. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to put my cards on the table by saying that the Financial Services Regulatory Authority was in fact enacted, enacted when I served as Prime Minister, so I'm very familiar with the legislation. And my contention or issue is not with the fact of avoiding the names identified in both this bill and the previous bill in respect of companies. That's not my contention. My contention is not about whether you should have these names or whether these names should be permitted or anybody registering companies should include these names in the companies or in fact in the businesses that they are seeking to register. That's not my issue. My issue is the imposition of another layer of bureaucracy on the business conduct in this country. And honorable members will know that I have been consistently fighting against impositions. I have been consistently arguing against extensions of bureaucratic behavior by governments and by departments of governments. And it's nothing new. In fact, in opposition, I routinely criticized legislation that moved in that direction. And to this day, the Attorney General, my dear friend, my good friend, is yet to correct some of the impurities of legislation enacted by the former government. Castro City Council is one such act that needs cleaning up. But that, that's for another show, another occasion. Mr. Speaker, let me say this. The more a country is regulated, the more there is corruption. The countries with the greatest degree of corruption in the Caribbean are the countries that seek to regulate against evil. So the more you have legislation that regulates is the more you have corruption. And you know why, Mr. Speaker? Because people seek to get around the legislation, people seek to avoid the bureaucracy introduced by such legislation, so they buy the civil servants and buy public officials so they can get their way. Now, Mr. Speaker, you will be tempted to ask me which countries I have in mind, but you know them well. I ask you to look from the north in Jamaica to the south way down in South America and look at the range of countries and those countries who have repeatedly over the years sought to deal with their social issues by regulatory behavior. And this is what is happening to us because the more we regulate is the more our people look for ways and means to get around the regulations, get around the laws by engaging in deceitful and corrupt behavior. Now, Mr. Speaker, I have made it clear that I do not object to the central mission, that is to say, 
to prevent the use of these terms in the names of companies or in business names. But it is the method. Sometimes I fear that we have been creating monsters in our midst. And we have to be very careful that we do not allow a company like, uh, sorry, an entity like the Financial Services Regulatory Authority to engage in behavior that we can describe as overreaching, where they want to regulate every simple living thing simply because they themselves have become so inefficient in what they do. And that's my problem. That is my problem. And we have to ask ourselves each time that they come to cabinet or to a minister and say, we want to amend this legislation or that legislation to achieve A, B, and C. And the first question that should be asked, is this overreaching? Is this impinging on the rights of our citizens who engage in le legitimate lawful behavior? And we're not asking that question enough, Mr. Speaker. You know, a few moments ago, and I really don't know whether the member of Castries East had me in mind, although I didn't speak to the bill. But in the committee stage of this bill, he asked that a clause in Clause 6, I'm referring to the Citizen of St. Lucia bill, be removed. And you know it is the temerity of it. Do you know, Mr. Speaker, in accordance with what the member from Migo said, you are granting citizenship to, um, to grandchildren and offsprings of St. Lucian parents, etc., etc. A noble intention, nobody's quarreling with that. But you take a bill like this, where you are trying to get these people to apply for their citizenship, and you put in the bill that they must get a letter of clearance from the Inland Revenue Department. How about that somebody who's living in England? A child growing up in England can get to the Inland Revenue Department and ask for a clearance. And I don't know whether the Honorable Member saw me in the House and he, somehow he figured that I might raise an issue about this. I don't know. But it is a kind of stupidity that we engage in because of this problem of overreaching. How you can't go and ask somebody who's resident in the UK to go and get clearance from the Inland Revenue Department located all the way in St. Lucia? Why you do things like that? Because it is this culture of overreach, Mr. Speaker. Unnecessary impositions, and it is to the credit of the member that he asked that that clause be excised. And I assume, Mr. Speaker, that the other paragraphs will be subsequently renumbered. Now, Mr. Speaker, I know that when these issues are raised, that people feel that these are inconsequential observations and should not matter. But I want to go back to an issue I previously raised. And again, I don't wish to be misunderstood. I want to go back to the issue of the land registry. I'm going to back there because, you see, Mr. Speaker, we don't understand sometimes the consequences, Mr. Speaker, of this concept of overreaching. It is to the credits of the government, of the relevant ministry, that some changes have been brought to the land registry in the last week or so. But I want to tell you what used to occur and I'm not saying the problems have been resolved. What used to occur is that no lawyer in St. Lucia can execute a deed in St. Lucia, a deed of sale, a deed of conveyance, unless you get the land register documents and you begin to search for the history of the entry on the land register, which often requires you to look at the instruments that created the particular document, etc. But that gives you a ah, history of Mr. Speaker. For weeks, Mr. Speaker, since February, March, lawyers could not get from the land registry copies of the instruments of these documents. And you know what the consequences were, Mr. Speaker? It meant that from since February, 
lawyers could not execute deeds of sale, which in turn meant that the government of St. Lucia was losing revenue. And to make matters worse, it is known that the banks and financial institutions say that these so-called letters of compliance only have a duration of three months and you have to reapply if, of course, you are unable to complete the transaction in three months. So, to illustrate my point, you know what happens, Mr. Speaker? The, Inland, the Land Registry Department, in an important departure, said, lawyers, you can now apply online for your records. Everybody applauded. I came to this house, I applauded. I said, great. Mind you, it came out of COVID. But when you are in a firm and you apply for the instruments, and this is occurring since February, no one acknowledges that you have applied, and you do not get the instruments, and in fact, February passes, March passes, April passes, May passes, we are now in June. Do you know, Mr. Speaker, my firm is only now receiving instruments that it applied for in February. And you know the consequence of that, Mr. Speaker? The consequence is that persons who got sales for properties, those sales were canceled because of the time issues. People lost their sales. Now, who really should be bearing the liability for this? Who should be bearing the liability? If a member of the public has an agreement for sale, it is to be completed within a certain period of time. It is not completed because of this kind of behavior with the land registry. Who then is to complete the sale? But guess what, Mr. Speaker? Guess what, Mr. Speaker? For reasons no one could explain, if the individuals went into the land registry and asked for the land register records, they would get it. But the firms, the lawyers will not get it. So you know what the lawyers start to do? They decided they're going to beat the system. The lawyers then started to go themselves directly to get the documents. When they reach there, they tell them, no, you can't go there. You must apply for it online. So lawyers retreat. So the lawyers decided to ask the individuals engaged in the transactions to go to the land registry to ask for the documents. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? All the individuals came to the lawyers' offices and said, here are the documents that you wanted. They can get it, but not the lawyers. Can I tell you, Mr. Speaker? Have you any idea what inducements were offered to get those documents? And I tell you this to make a simple point. The more you engage in bureaucratic and regulatory behavior, is the more people are going to get devious to find ways and means to get around those regulatory practices. Now the question is, what do you do with this legislation? I want to make it very, 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 very clear that I'm not opposing this legislation, but I do have problems, especially in respect of the business names amendment that you first have to apply to the Director of Financial Services Regulatory Authority. Because there's a very real danger that he's going to, he or she, they're going to sit on that application until it pleases them to deal with the application. That's the kind of problem that you have. My personal view is that the power should never have been given to the director of financial services but the power should have remained with the registrar of companies and intellectual property and allow the registrar to consult the director. And in both instances, wherever you go, you apply a timeline that the director must respond in 14 days. We have to combat this. We have to combat this passion for bureaucracy in this country, for putting impediments to creating business 
We are not doing any better with improving business performance in this country. What we're doing is busy passing laws left, right, and center all the time. Regulation, regulation, control, control. All the time, that's what we are preoccupied with. And that is why I believe it is absolutely essential that we, we constantly ask those questions necessary as the spirit and intendant may be. And when you see you are locating a power between two or more entities, then your problems are likely to become exacerbated, even more serious, because, because the power is distributed. We have to begin to manage our civil servants and public officials. We have to make them understand that they are there to serve the public and they can't do the things that they are doing. Holding the entire country and holding ordinary people to ransom. I have constantly asked the question, why on earth do we need clearance letters from the Inland Revenue Department? Why is this still, in our, still existing? There is no statutory basis for it. Why does the NIC need clearance? Let the NIC handle this matter differently. And on top of that, none of these letters are valid more than three months. And these days, because of the delays we experience, you can hardly complete any transaction in this country unless you have some special relationship with the officials at certain points in three months' time. What are we doing? What are we doing? And these are my, that's my issue with these things, Mr. Speaker. And I think we have to be careful that we don't burden our citizens, we don't oppress our citizens, we don't make life harder for our citizens, that we don't put them through unnecessary bureaucracy to undertake simple transactions. And that's my issue. And we have to be careful where we locate power. And we always have to ask that question whether the location of that power is going to add on our responsibilities and add to our burdens. That really is my simple, my simple contribution, Mr. Speaker. I repeat, I have no difficulty with the spirit of the legislation requiring that these terms not be used, but I have difficulty with the location of the power and to whom that power is entrusted because it is going to cause even more pain for the ordinary citizen in this country. And you know, Mr. Speaker, you see the business registration of businesses, business, business names? Any ordinary citizen can go into the company's register and register a business name in it. You don't need a lawyer to do that, you know. You really don't need a lawyer to do that. In fact, there are a lot of ordinary St. Lucian small business people who go in and register their own, their own businesses, business names. But the so, so question is, that what are you doing? You now, you are now putting that power in the hands of a director of financial services before that individual goes from there and on to the company's registry. Why are we, just, why are we doing this? You know, Mr. Speaker, the days are long past when we should ever believe that all public servants act in good faith. They don't. They do not. They have their own agenda. They have their own ambitions. And they interpret power to please them. These days you write permanent secretaries about the plight of citizens, whether they be teachers or otherwise. They don't even bother reply to your letters. The only time the government becomes conscious is when you see the lawyer decides to file a claim and then suddenly the claim appears. But you know what? We're encouraging it. We are encouraging it. That's what we're doing. Instead of sometimes acknowledging that the letter is received and that we are considering, and can we have a meeting to discuss the contents of your letter? No, they ignore you. That's what's happening. And I think the reality is that we are not monitoring the delivery of the services that we are offering to people. That's the fundamental problem, Mr. Speaker. 
Now, you want to bet, Mr. Speaker, you will hear the usual refrain. He was there. Why didn't you do it? That's their, their line whenever I speak on matters like that. That's their line. You are there. Why didn't you do it? The answer is simple. I had an impeccable record when I attempted to deal with civil service registry. It was a government that I, I, I led that abolished that abolished the requirement of letters of clearance for people to travel. But the Inland Revenue has found a way to go around it now by latching it on to land transactions. That's, that's, the, that's the reality of the situation because they, the moment you do one thing, they go around it and reinvent to find some other way to get, to, to, to get some other approach to get away. And any government has to constantly fight this preoccupation with bureaucracy. And I ask that consideration be given to what I've said. The more a society is regulated, the more it becomes corrupt. Regulation and corruption feed on each other. You regulate, then those who want the services will seek for ways and means to peddle influence, to buy influence, and to beat the system. And you're talking about the problem you, you have in the police force? These are the kind of issues you, you should be looking at. These are the kind of issues. These are the kind of issues. An accident occurs in this country. When can you get a police report on the accident? When? You have to beg and beg and beg and beg. Months you can't get the police report on the accident. Why? These are the kind of issues that we have to tackle, Mr. Speaker. These are the kind of issues. And we have to be careful of arming civil servants with unnecessary authority. We have to bring an end to overreaching. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and say no more.